I'm Angus, the creative director of Dark Matter. I don't take it for granted because every day I wake up and, and live my dream job. Yeah, because you can help define it, you yeah. can help drive it. So we have definitely creative control and they allow us to be ourselves and allow us to express ourselves. But I think it comes down to your tenets of what's gotten you to where you are today, which is your consistency, your authenticity, creating relatable content, and just honing that ability and skill. Um, and I can't wait to watch the space even further. And you're listening to the Blood, Sweat and Ideas podcast. Welcome to Blood, Sweat and Ideas. Uh, Cooks, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. For anyone that is not familiar with your name or with your, uh, your, your face, um, you are a current uh, commentator for Supersport, as well as a uh, Instagram local sensation, brand personality with over 22,000 followers, where you turn pretty much anything into a microphone. And I mean anything, like I went far, far, quite far back on your feed. <laughs> we've got plungers, we've got whisks, we've got lights. Um, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And yeah, thanks Cooks for spending some time with us on Blood, Sweat and Ideas. Yeah, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having me. I mean, it's, must, it's weird actually talking to a real microphone yeah. after that. Um, obviously, I've tried my best to find any object um, any object as a microphone. The problem is now that I'm running out of objects. Yeah, you're running out of ideas. That's, yeah. a, that's a problem. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I've you reuse uh, quite a bit of the summer, I think, but um, for FPR, I'm actually worried now. I might have to actually have to go to a little DIY, DIY shop. Yeah, you're going to have shop. to walk through like a builder's and just check everything. I might, I might like, just, like use an ironing board. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like it gets progressively bigger, like this chair. Like, hello, uh, your cook's here, loved you. Yeah, I think, I I mean, think that's my plan now from now on. I think I've got a, some, like literally like now, the video's the easy part. Now mm -hmm. it's like actually finding a microphone. Because then you go like, crap. Okay, I've used this, 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 I've used this. Then I go, okay. So back to the cell phone, it is. Yeah, then. back to the, okay, what's the best thing? Maybe it's about changing the brands of each of the things. Yeah, you know, it's so, like, okay, I've done a Nokia and I'm going to do a Samsung. <laughs> Bring out like an old Alcatel, you know, going, <laughs> it's vintage. Um, I, th I, think, I think it's really fun. So for anyone, um, I keep saying that. For anyone who doesn't know you, I think it's uh, a, a great idea to go onto your Instagram and just see the level of um, comedy that you've brought to the post-match interview. Thank you. Um, I think it's just been, a, it's a breath of fresh air around how you've leveraged social media in a way to create a career for yourself, which is a started out as having fun, messing about, um, and maybe we can dive into that story of how this all came about where you, you decided to become a, a commentator on your social media my first video was 2018, because mm. uh, before this, I used to be a teacher and I uh, worked at a boarding house. And then um, the boarding house was from grade five to grade seven. So they're one of the kids that brought the Xbox. And um, so obviously I was chilling, bored, and the kids got like, sir, can we take you on an Xbox? I'm like, okay, cool, we're playing FIFA. And the kid's like, oh, so you can't play FIFA, you're too old. I was like, I've been playing FIFA since, literally since before you were born. Like, this is... I was playing it on Sega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was, I was like 24, 24, 24, I'm like, I'm like what, do, what do you mean? Like, mm. I'm going to destroy you. And then, yeah, just there's like 10 kids in the hostel, beat all of them. Um, and then, so, so I was like, I went to the one kid, I'm like, oh, I've got, I got this cool idea. I wanted like a post-match interview. But yeah. I've got seen... You know, I, I love the, the sports post-match interview because, and I, and I watch all of them, you know, make fun of the guys, maybe say the wrong thing, yeah. or say the, the, the broken English, the something we used to laugh at. Um, and then also, like, the funniest thing about the sports and post-match interviews is that how cliche it is, you know? Mm. So it's the, always the same answer. Yeah, like, give credit to the opposition. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, we tried. I mean, obviously, we got to take the X's and O's. Same thing is it? Mm. all the time. So I figured I was like, what I was going to do was speak, do that by speaking, but obviously playing playing FIFA, FIFA. Yeah. and then that's how, that's how the idea sort of came about, but not like, I wouldn't say it was something that I wanted to sort of pursue at that stage. I mean, if you told me when I made that video five years ago, this would, five years later, my life would be how it is now, yeah. I definitely thought you, I was like, that, that is impossible, because first of all, like I was, when I was coaching, then I'm like, when am when I'm going to be coaching? When would this ever yeah. happen? Yeah. And then, yeah, I think from there, 2019, I actually started doing I, I, I posted quite a bit, um, video, but I get it's I just genuinely like making post page interview videos. So that's so that was that was the thing. And then we just post on Twitter, I just post on Instagram and Facebook, so all my friends used to watch it. People genuinely enjoyed it. Um, and then yeah, I'll say I took a break twenty twenty because I used to have a kid actually who used to be on screen with me. His name was Liam. Okay. He used to be on screen with me, and then Liam selfishly went up to grade eight. 
Oh. And then um, <laughs> he passed his exam. He passed his exam, <laughs> and then he just went to grade eight. And I'm like, so Liam, now what happens to me now? Like, <laughs> this is a duet. I lost two. The one kid was I lost. I lost two great interviewers in a row, and then. So he left. I was like, oh, so I mean, I was like, oh, Liam's going to great. Well, eight. Liam's really kicking himself now, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> Should have stayed, never grown he, up. He forced me to be. He forced yeah. me to do it on my own. Yeah. Liam could be sitting right here next to me, actually. The band broke up, and then, and then I remember obviously when Liam went to high school in 2020, I was like, okay, now I'm just gonna make my own sort of take a break. Actually, I just stopped. Actually, more than anything, I just stopped, mm. and then it's like. I've, I've done like enough post my stuff and then I'm going to do random other videos. The pandemic comes and yeah. you usually get bored and I started doing post match interviews again. And then, yeah, I'll say the rest is history and then one got picked up and then now I'm sitting in a podcast talking about it. Yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> right? It's like how that's changed. Now I'm sitting in a podcast talking to you about your yeah. journey. Um, no, I, th I, think it, I think it's such a cool outcome. And, and this is why when I heard your story, it just excited me so much because you've, You've taken what your what your then what was just like a fun time like it was just a bit of play, a bit of fun, a bit of a passion intermingling it into creating content which you know you didn't expect to do anything with. It was just like we have a, you have a social media feed. Let me just post something, and over time that has like turned into a flourishing career. And I think for us working in digital marketing, like I just want to understand what other people could do like not to follow your story exactly but like what are the lessons that you've learned that can inspire someone who's listening to this who's maybe a little bit younger maybe maybe it's Lim in grade nine i don't know i don't know if he's out of school yet it's it? go matric next year i'm a trick good yeah. luck good luck <laughs> uh, liam study for those exams um but it's like what 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 have you learned that others can take away from you to to maybe make or forge their own path two things i think number one consistency mm -hmm. i mean I've been doing this for five years. Yeah. Like, obviously, I've been viral for two. And obviously, been popular and, and got internet sensation. Just quoting your words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> From the original take. I don't know if it's in here now. <laughs> um, and then, so, sort of two years. But but for that, I've been, I've been doing this for five years. Yeah. I've been creating, doing interview videos for five years. I've got probably 100 band content that I've done. So, I know ooh, it's how, what it takes to yeah. create a video. I... I and for me, the consistency comes. That's why if, if I can't think of something, or if I've got to do a video, like for example, like let's say I must do a video about the tablet, I'm like I know how to prepare for it, what to do because I've done it. Because mm. the, the work speaks for itself yeah. in terms of the five years I've been before I even got on social media, like as big as it is now, making those videos, you know, and finding out what's funny, trying to find what makes it funny, how can I, what what questions make it funny, what mm. this makes it funny, like. Finding out things like the, the big question that I'll, a lot of people love is going like, where to from here? But that's, that was, a, I started that in 2021, but that's that's a, a trial run. That, that's a question that Liam used to, used to ask in 20. Yes. But we, 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 we asked things like, where, like where to in the future? What's the next plan? And eventually we landed on where to from now? Yeah. Or where to from here? And then that's become a thing. Where, but again, that's, that, that, that came from four years ago. Yeah. So it's sort of things. It, sort of things you've worked on and the consistency that has that come with it and it's refined. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a great word for it. It's become refined. But refined also is very raw as well. But again, again, but then again, the second thing I've learned is being authentic. Mm. The content I make is genuinely who I am. Mm. It's, it's, I, I, the person you see making the videos, that's how I am all the time. I speak nonsense and my friends know as I, 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 I try to make everybody, I try to make everybody laugh. I, I, like it's, I genuinely like. I always used to say, like, when I was single, I was like, if I was going to date with someone, if you don't find me funny, I got, I got no plan. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Like, I don't know what else you want from me. Like, if you don't find me funny, like, let's end this right here, right now, because then we're wasting. Like, I'm just a funny person. That's how I like to make jokes. I see. I try to find the humor in everything. But again, <laughs> but that's why I said like, I like to be authentic in doing it and and, and being authentic in that is funny though <laughs> in, 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 in what I do and but I go again it's because social media there's so much the the trends in social media is hectic at the moment you know what I mean like mm. you can be pulled in so many direction when I have as we all have there's so many ways society dictates how we must be you need yeah. to listen to this type of music you need to wear this we need to be watching this like if you if you're not if you're not watching. Netflix, the show, Netflix, whatever show it is. And you're not part of that conversation around it, then you're completely yeah, out of the loop. Like yeah. Now, like, yeah, sorry, yeah, you're not watching Stranger Things. That's, mm. Then you're like, then you're not out of it. Like, why aren't you not watching this? Why aren't you not doing this? Why aren't you not doing this? And that's how social media di dictates us. And I go, the best thing you can do in these times is actually to be yourself. 100%. Because the best 
product you can sell is yourself. If, if you don't back yourself, why must someone else back you? Because what I find now, especially in content, is the, the, the originator in some, say, a trend or it goes one way. People tend to follow that and they, mm. they do a lesser version of that. They can be successful, but they'll never be successful, more successful than the, girl, the, the, the original person who made that video. And then I'll find even on TikTok, some of you, there'll be a great audio that comes out. And, and it's such an original, the, it's an original audio. And then you try, you, I can make a funny video of it. It'll be funny, you can, we can. But after a while, you're like, the original one is the best. It'll, no, 100%. It'll, it'll always be the it's best the one. the one that leads it. It's always be the best yeah. one. And that person there can always create something else. But you, but, you, but you also, you can also always follow a trend. You can follow trends and be successful 100%. And, and, but it, I always feel like if you're original, you created a, a different path for yourself. Like you're creating that like subsect or that sub genre within because something. Because it's you. It's, yeah. And I can always replicate me. Mm. I can't re replicate someone else. Yeah. So that's, that, that's how I always say to people, like be consistent and 100% main thing is, it's the most cliche thing you get told, oh, be yourself. I used to love, oh, be yourself, be yourself. Then I realized actually that's the, most the best important advice thing. I've ever given is be yourself, be authentic. And no, 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 one, no one can steal that. People can do interview, interview videos and I've seen Dozens of people do interview videos, but I know that, that, that so it's not me. Mm. I can run a bed and make an interview video. That it's a skill that I've honed, and yeah. that's what I know how to do. Some people have to wait for me to do something, and they can do it. And they can try, and I, and, I, and I love when people do it. It's my one of my favorite things seeing people do your craft. But I also like, but, but then again, I said like, guys, don't do it to go viral. Do it but like I didn't play. Because you enjoy going viral. doing it. Yeah. I, it. It became a byproduct of the consistency <laughs> and just of who I am. Yeah, I think that's a, a very important lesson in that is the end goal for you wasn't, you didn't actually have a goal. Yeah. It was just having fun, creating content with Liam, you know, just, I think too many people th miss the fun aspect of these yeah. things, right? It's they, a thing of trying to be viral. Yes, yeah, and trying to be viral and getting to that end point and I want to be on Supersport, so I need to do this video now. It's, it's you did something over five years consistently being yourself and then you're reaping those rewards now. But again, it's like, <laughs> my worst question is always like, what's next? I'm like, guys, I don't know how, I don't know how I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing today, and then I don't know what's coming afterwards. Like, I don't know where this is going. Because yeah, like, yeah. generally, like, every day, something like a week or six months, something new comes. I'm like, oh my word, this is amazing. They go, like, okay, cool, but now you got to plan for the future. I'm like, I'm trying to, mm. then something cooler happens. So I go, like, so I genuinely also enjoy the aspect, but like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean listen, going, Going viral is very cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, no, it's, it, it is very cool. But I, but I, then I go to people like social media has changed now. You can be viral, and it's about consistency and mm. what makes it viral. And I think I don't think Joe Berg gets enough credit, so maybe you can give a shout out to Joe Berg next time you're on <laughs> Super Sport. I definitely will. He doesn't doesn't get enough credit. Mm. I, I think because Cape Town's got the views and all of the beach, but Joe Berg's got like people. Yeah, that's the thing for me. It's people. It's a Six million of us or something stupid or something else. Probably so, more. Probably more. <laughs> so there's people everywhere. And it makes us makes it sort of special. Yeah, it makes an environment. Mm. We've also got some of the coolest uh, sporting landmarks in South Africa. Yeah, we've got the Bull Ring, Wanderers, who got uh Love what is it? with Ellis Park. I was, yeah, is it Ellis Park? Can't we still say that? I mean, do you, yeah. would you yeah. get in trouble for saying Ellis Park on No Ellis Park? Oh Emirates Airline Park or Emirates Airline Park, yeah, you see. It's still number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one of our <laughs> dashboard. We're being we're being we're being told what to do here. <laughs> no one just wants a normal flowing conversation anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll get I'll get to those points. Mm. Um, so how did you <laughs> how did you get into Super Sport? <laughs> that's a really good segue. <laughs> it's a great segue. Um, now, when you're looking back, having been at Super Sport for the last what two, two years, years now, two yeah. years. Can you recall that moment that you got that notification or that phone call that you were going to be, you know, hired or asked to do something for them? Yeah, I can. I mean, it's the best DM I ever got in my life. Um, <laughs> they slid into your DMs. Slid into my Twitter DMs. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was 2021. I was well, deep in, deep in COVID. I mean, I remember I was, when I got that um, DM, I was in quarantine that back in those days. Yeah. I remember that one, 10 days. Mm, long. Flipping, you know, touch elbows with someone that was positive with COVID. So I was in quarantine. I got a message um, while I was busy watching Entourage. Cause what else can you Great do? Great show. What else, what else does one does when you mm. do when you're in quarantine and then watch series? And then yeah, I got a DM asking me to, to do a video, like a post interview mm -hmm. video about the approaches they were playing Pakistan at the time. And I was like, it was for Supersport. And I was yeah. like, 
lady was like, no, I'm from Super Sport, and like, we'd love to do something. I'm like, this is video for Super Sport, Super Sport. And they're like, yeah, we're going to pay you, which was actually wild, because I mean, I, 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 I think before then, I, I'd done about like four, three or four campaigns. The concept of being paid for what I was doing was wild. It was the wildest thing for me. And people were like, oh, we're going to pay you to. Mm. I'm like, going to pay me to do something I do all the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm just going to keep making videos then. And you like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, are you, like, you paying me, paying me? <laughs> and, then, and then, obviously, I, I did those videos for them. Uh, those three, and then it went, it went well. And then I came up to Joburg to do Super Tube, um, one of the YouTube shows. And then, yeah, it was the first time I ever got to see the studio which was incredible. I still get goosebumps going to the studio now because when you walk into the studio, there's a there's like a wall of champions so showing like images of what all the stuff they've shot, like like Brian O'Banner and like Proteus, yeah, and like winning the World Cup 95. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's like, you're posted at war and you're like, man, Super Sports obviously shot, been a part yeah, of Yeah, they've been of everywhere, yeah. And like, and now I get to play a part in that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's working at Super Sports, it's, been, it's, it's incredible. It's a dream. It is my dream job. Mm. And you've done that for, for three years now and also for me the what got me into the main thing was super sports school so i mean being being a teacher and being able to sort of do the schools travel all over the country watching derby days and things like that and just obviously promoting what school sports is and as you do super sports schools and do work in the main brain is it's a dream come true for me it's like, huge it's like one of those things where i i, I don't i, I don't take i don't take it for granted because every day I wake up and, and live my dream job, yeah. you know, I, I watch sports for a living. Like on Saturday, I'm going to Loftus to watch the Bulls and the Lions, but that's my job. I'm going to I sit there and I watch sports for a living. And it's, I, th I know a lot of guys go like, the, the, they want my job, people love sports. And and it's, yeah, it's incredible to think that how these videos actually opened up a pathway for me to actually, to live my dream. Mm. And, you know, I always, like, whenever I say it, it's like, it feels like I'm being like a cliche, like, oh God, and chest of your dreams. And I'm like, yes. Because they can come true, and I'm, I feel like I'm living testament of that. And I love that, yeah. and I'm happy to know that every day, like this is what I do for a living. I watch, watch sports, and um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, flipping love. Sounds it. like the best job ever. To best be best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It truly is. And I think, you know, taking it from someone who is also an avid sports fan and hooligan maybe in some cases certain <laughs> yeah. sports depends who's playing if no. Chelsea or if well, I've, I've, I've done a deep dive I don't <laughs> want to raise I don't want to open up that can of worms for you um, very funny video that you posted though um, yeah I, th I think it's quite cool that, that you've utilized the social media as the springboard without even knowing that it could potentially do that for mm. you but like now you've you've got this opportunity and you're running with both hands you know you're, you're taking that and like you say you're, you're walking through the wall of champions like that is epic, and I don't. I don't know that about super sport. That's really cool that they have yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's flipping cool, and it's like, yeah, it's like it's like a great reminder every time you go there. Mm -hmm. I, every time I go to the studio, it's always make sure I walk past. You look around, and um, you see something new probably each see time. See something, see something new each time, and then like, and, and it's exciting. You know, you're like, man, flip this is. Something I, I I'll remember. Like oh, I remember watching this, mm. and then you're like, but now I'm part of the company that works for it. I mean, I remember last year, me, oh, she's doing the World Cup, and being a part of it. That, that broadcast uh, the broadcast and the production of it and you think to yourself when the world cup ended i was like man i was involved in a world cup production that's epic like that is i was there i was sweating i was on we do, I was, I was a part of the whole thing and when we, we were doing live stuff and it, <laughs> i remember our colleagues so it's the first time we'd done like i done live stuff we were doing live and but yeah pieces of talking and we we're going to get it was in the middle of the, of the obviously the build-up so my, my, my producer also my mate he goes Hey, Cooks, don't stress. Hey, before you go on, remember, only 55 million people watching you all over Africa. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Did that calm you down? <laughs> no. That, 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 made me, that made me stress even more. But, like, but then again, you think the magnitude of, the, mm. of, of what Super Sports done, and you know, you'd like, SA, the SA20, and you're like, man, I was a, I was a part of the first ever yeah, SA20. Wildly successful. And, and you're well. like, sit there, and you're like, that's what Super Sports give you. And you look back, and, because that was funny, I, I want to say this, I was sitting with my parents like that, um, the tournaments, are, it's amazing. You see a different aspect when you're part of it. Because mm. you're in the media box. In the media, and you're part of it, and you're working, and you're here, and you're here. So for you, it's like work. You're like, yeah, you love it. You're like, yeah, you're busy, and you're busy, and you're busy. So everyone's like enjoying it. You're like, everyone's like, yeah, this is the best. Like, you stress, okay, next flight, I'm flying here, I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here. And you look back, you're like, oh, that was actually good fun. Yeah, <laughs> I actually enjoyed that game. In yeah. a different way than I've enjoyed it, like, say, going, mm. to, going to stands, or watching the games on TV. You're like, man, but I'm a part of it now. So that's, yeah, that's. That's been the, the, the probably the coolest thing about working in sports sport is 
being involved in like all these things. Obviously, the Rugby World Cup's coming out this year. I'm excited for that. Oh, that would be massive. And create World Cup. So being part of World Cups and pre-productions, oh man, it's the best. I'm sure. What is what is the legacy that you want to leave at Supersport? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say I just want, just want to create good content. I just want to know when I leave there that they just remember me as as a guy who sort of came in here, took a chance, and just really created good content and just added tremendous value to the brand. Mm. Especially the brand now, obviously, we were working a lot more digitally and doing also. That's something that's, and we sort of the first layer in that of, of the guys supposed to become more digital. I want to be at least when in 20 years' time when this content creators come in, going, Cooks was part of yeah, the original the, guys. You laid this foundation. The original guys, the, the, the six, the, what, the 10 of us now are doing it now. But I'll to be a part of that. That's the thing I'm excited for. I'm excited to see what I can leave behind this digital area super sport is going into. And for me, that's something exciting to know. We were one of, the, one of the first guys to do that. One of the first, like, say, full on content creators be hired by Supersport and they've made a big emphasis on us and be in, and it's 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 exciting for me to be a part of it, to be one of the first ones. It's like, man, I'm 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 a part of like a change. I mean like we look at the S20, it's amazing to be the part of be a part of the very first one. No, it was a very fun event, I and have then to say. Like, so like now it's that's what I want to do with Supersport. Like content content creators be like, man, thanks Cooks for actually helping pave the way and mm. going through those stumbling boxes. Because Supersport when they, they're gonna when this thing is flourishing where it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. And I just wanna know I was at the beginning of it. I love being a, a part of something, the start of something. Yeah. Talking about that, being a content creator that they've now hired, and this is like obviously something that's new and they're changing with the times that is, you know, the modern 21st mm. century. Do they give you creative control over what you do say and how you do it? Because obviously you've, I've seen on your social media currently, you, you've got like this, these new characters where you're actually taking very timely things like load shedding, for example, mm. where you did an after press interview with load shedding after the Easter break. <laughs> very, very, very funny. Do they do they try and like control what no, you post there? We've got um, full creative license in terms of, because they know like, we know our audience and first, first and foremost, like, so they mm. know that we know what's best to, to engage our audience and we're the experts in, in the what fields you're doing, that we're doing. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, so we have definitely creative control and they allow us to be ourselves and allow us to express ourselves because at the end of the day, like that's who they hire us to be. Yeah. They hire us to sit and be like, uh, be this type of presenter. Do that. Like, no, they hire us to be ourselves. That, and they, and they, that's, that's actually what they tell us every single time. Because some of us, we get nervous, like, stop being nervous. This is what we hire you. We hire you to be yourself. Be yourself. We want to see cooks. You want to see so and so. Mm. That's what you want to see. And they keep trying to get our personalities out because like, like we do like so sometimes you sit there you'll do like a show and you'll be like you're too like f straight and narrow and you're trying to get the point like i mean we don't we have endless and pandas yeah to do all of that the, the, you, earn your lane yeah. you, we know you're passionate about chelsea and mm. you actually over passionate be that person that's why you're here <laughs> you know i mean a certain team a certain sports you're passionate about be that person that we mm. see on social media be that I, I think if anything it, it makes you because all the other commentators generally come from the sporting background, mm. so they play it. Whereas you are the fan who's now the commentator. So you almost resonate. And I think a big part of what you do is relate mm. to that consumer or the, the viewer of the, fa like the, the fan watching the game, like who wants to be in your yeah. shoes. They're like, oh my word, that's me. Because you want them, like, a big part of my content is I want to, to people to relate to it. Mm. You know, it's like, so, so it would be easy to make. Like let's say I'm gonna just make fun of a say Faf du Plessis when he was captain of the. Of the <laughs> Sorry, Faf. <laughs> no, not in that way. No, no. I know you know him, so it's fine. No, like in a way, like yeah. easy, like say make fun of Faf's interview style. Mm. But then no one will get it if you're unless you watch cricket. If mm. you watch cricket, you don't. Get yeah, it. yeah, you you segment that market. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, okay, cool. What if I take a post-match interview, sort of use the same cliches, but then do it with everyday things, yeah. load shedding, washing dishes, Easter, winter, and all those things. And it's like, hey, I'll go through winter. I'll do load shedding. I'll wash dishes. Everybody relates to those things. And, uh, and that's, I think, has been one of the, the successes of, the, um, of, of my content because mm -hmm. people relate to it. And like, it's funny. And, and you, if, you, if you look at it, a lot of it is a lot of the cliches. A lot of the like, yeah, obviously for us, we, we just got to be better. And then obviously with then, it's got to throw in a joke. The yeah, joke to tie back, yeah. A little joke there in the middle. Sort of, sort of the, the joke is normally like the glue in between. And then... Then the, you still get the like, oh, obviously we're gonna be better at this and this, but then 
chill care, chill care. And then again, like, oh, we see, we'll, we see how we go and improve and the work on like little nuances. I mean, that's the thing, like, if someone watches my content all the time, you watch, you, you see like, I, I've got all these nuances I work on, like, I'll touch my face. So I'll, <laughs> I'll like, do the, like, lean back and you're like, you're, like oh, I'm, I'm, like, there's a thing that captains do, like, when they'll get all the tough question, they're like, so like, what happened here? Like, do you think the refs and they go like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like they always find a way to like they, they, they're not to say what they're thinking but for the ones like, like it's almost like a little pause like, yeah they're I stalling something ah. and then, <laughs> in their actual heads like they're saying exactly what we know yeah, what they're, they're like, thinking yeah it's, it's not a place to talk about the referee like you know there's all those yeah. things and like you can't like, criticize you can't so criticize like, I, I used to try and like always find the, like i love to find the nuances and if i wear a cap i'll do all the things so it's all part of it. You're, you're almost like studying it, right? Like yeah, this is, it's 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 yeah. almost like the, the the perfect amount of collateral is here yeah. live for you, and then you're getting to pick up now that you're actually probably live with them. You probably see even like a little bit more nuances, a yeah, little bit more detail. Some you see, like I mean, some. I mean, I remember making fun of Stephen Kitsoff, which was actually not a good idea because. <laughs> I mean, you're a big guy. Yeah, I'm sure he's bigger. Whenever he talks, he like he's got his straps on. He always like pulls his shoulder while he's talking. So I did it as a joke in front of him once, and then I was like, "This is what you do." So he grabbed me, and then I like, like, grabbed my arm. He's like, okay, cooks, come do this in front of the team. Show them what I do. So I'm like, I can't say no, number one, because I'm very scared of putting kids off. And I'm like, yeah, cool, <laughs> I'm going to do this. And it's quite cool that, cause, like, quite cool that he actually, because I don't find some of they do enjoy it, and they don't take it seriously. I mean, and, and some, they are, because some, luckily I don't take offense. I mean, I, I, I don't do it to offend. Yeah, no, of course not. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think for me, it's, if I, I, study, I do study, I genuinely do that. Yeah. I'll do find some, you know, like from, from for example, Fuff all stands with his hands behind his face like this. When he talks, that, that's his thing. Like Aiden's orders are crossed. He's like some guys, I like, guess some guys like, like lean forward and they talk and stuff. So like, like I see his orders like hands in his head, like, almost like hands on his, his hands, hips, yeah, and, and his hips. He's always like looking up and he orders make make with this thing when I do content. I would see his orders like some inspirational. Like you can ask him like what the game. See at the box one fifty two ten. Like talking about those tries, like yeah, we won because our nation's inspired. I'm like, oh man, just about the tries. So like, <laughs> but deep we get into it. it like, yeah. We deep, we, we in the, we're in the trenches, but like you'd be like, oh, but like, our country is suffering. You're like, oh, hey, still about the tries. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the sport for now. Yeah, like oh, well, like, that's I mean, testament is is uh, his philosophy is no hundred percent going above and beyond, right? I mean, so that's what we study. So you always pick up all the nuances. So everyone's different. Yeah, so. I love it. I think I yeah. think it's so cool. And I, I think there's. There's a rise of it. I mean, I'm sure I can't remember what the name of the content creator is, but he does all those um, those impersonations, and mm -hmm. then he'll bring. There's I know there's one where Jose Mourinho meets Jose Mourinho. Oh, it's Conor Moore. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's Conor Moore. Yeah. yeah, he's excellent. And it's also just fun to see where he's like he's gone on to another level as well, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just it just shows you that these opportunities for anyone that wants to, like you said, live their dream. Yeah, there's a way and a means of doing it. And it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be one video and you're going to be getting that call to go and do these things. It's going to be consistency, authenticity, creating content yeah. that's creative as well as relatable. And it's all of those things amalgamating into this like melting pot mm. that allows you to be sitting. Well, I don't think this is as prestigious as where you've been, <laughs> but I'm so grateful that we get to hear your story no, of how that actually happens. But I wanted to bring it back to what you just said there now is you know, being a fan now working in this environment, has there been one athlete in particular that you've met and you've just thought, oh my word, I'm actually meeting this this person <laughs> for real? So frustrating because I've got to hype him up now. <laughs> I mean, if, if people have followed me for a while, they know my relationship with Brian O'Banner. Um, yeah, meeting Brian O'Banner was, first, first of all, meeting him the first time, that was that was wild. I, was, I couldn't believe it. And I'd met him at... The, the ad agency that I was working at, he was one of the, he was one of the partners. And then I also met him in a work sense. And then, mm. so for some reason, my boss at the time was like, you need to start making fun. You're in charge of making fun of Brian O'Bannon. So I was like, that was your job title. I was like, <laughs> so whenever like my PP scores, you'd be like, oh, my PP is the best number 11 of all time. So just to be like, just like make fun of him. I'm like, why, yeah, am, I, why am I the one making fun of Brian O'Bannon? Mm. Like, I don't, I, I like my guy. idol. <laughs> and then we sort of from there, sort of had a sort of relationship where, like now we always you always banter each other. Yeah. You all like in, at work and he, we've been the same shoot. It's always me and him going having a go at each other. But we'll be having a go at each other all the time. But but then again I'll think, oh but this is Brian O'Bend. <laughs> like and he's one of the best human beings. He's very genuine, mm. very professional and him and him and I get along very like get along great and I always whenever I do spend time with him, I always like he's just it's he's always welcoming. Whenever I need something 
content or anything. He's always he's like, Brian, I can help you. This is hundred percent. And is he a bit of a mentor to you? Would you say like now being full time at SuperSport? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say like yeah, it's someone to look up to in terms of the way what he's done post rugby, like mm. his businesses and the way he carries himself, the way he goes about his business. It's someone like I've never said that to him, and but it's like whenever I watch him, he's like, you see how he goes about how how particular he's always certain things. You can see methodical but exactly yeah, but hard made him one of the literally one of the greatest rugby players of all time mm. and 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 also but off there such a humble such a humble look but such a <laughs> incredibly funny guy but it's always one of those things that because i'm always tossed of making fun of him it's, it's, it's always a losing cause right yeah i'm, I'm never I'm, I'm never gonna win yeah because like I, I never played with the spring box i didn't come close to play for the spring box so it's always like we, we, we you had, wear his shirt on the back. You yeah, wear the, the joke, number. Yeah. The joke the other day we were comparing blazers. I was like, "Well, I've got, I've got an honest blazer from school." He's like, "I got, I got a box blazer." Like, "I got an honest blazer." Like, "I got mine in grade eleven." Like, you had to wait like you're three years. <laughs> I peaked early, <laughs> but um, but Joe, he'll be. I'll say he's up the best. Um, Sean Pollock was one I made recently during SA twenty. Also incredible, incredible human being, mm. and but they've all been great. I, I, I haven't had a bad experience with anyone. I mean, obviously, like C has been great, and I've met him. Um, See, so yeah, I was amazing. I mean, extreme kids off all those guys, all the spring box. But then they'll come in and be like, hey, bro, cooks, oh my word, like, geez, so, man, I come in, I'm so excited to have met you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you throw my lines. <laughs> Yo, babe, it's, it's reverse. But, yeah, that, it's but that just shows you like the impact that you can also have on other cool. people, yeah. right? It's your comedy, it's your timing, it's, it's everything that we've just discussed, mm. which is now, again, just even compounding beyond that you ever imagined when you yeah, started no, this. 100%. When you, it's, like I said, it was never planned. There's times that, for example, like, man, I just feel like, well, I'm in such a good groove. Like, ideas are just mm, flowing. Flowing, purple but, uh, patch. I'm in, a, I'm in a good spot. Videos are coming. It feels good. It feels... Now I'm like, oh, man, I could make... Anything's fun. There's other times when, like, somebody get, get a brief where you're like, yo, this, I have got nothing funny today. <laughs> and I'm trying. And I'm like, mm-mm. And things like, for the normal person, maybe it could be fun. For me, I'm like, no, this is terrible. And you're like... Okay, tomorrow I'll try again. And you get tomorrow, you're like, wow, I've got no jokes today. Like, <laughs> I didn't yeah. like, like, you got, like, I don't have anything. I, I, and you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Luckily, they don't last too long. This movie, but normally, like, but for me, it's also, also a sign that I need a break. I uh, think, I think maybe what it goes back to that mm. mentality of winning. There's this thing called the science of momentum, mm. in which it dictates when you start to do things. For example, in the morning, mm. if you get up and you make your bed, you start building momentum of yeah. achieving things in your day. So then you take your clothes, put them in the laundry yeah. room, you make your food and you get like the habitual things, but it's the momentum of doing things and ticking mm. them off that then it leads to the bigger objects of say yeah. running the production of a podcast. Then it's like, you've done all these little things. The momentum pulls you over forward past the finish line to complete it. So for you, like getting that joke, getting that brief, oh, nothing's coming to mind. It's about finding what the momentum is that you can yeah. gain, and maybe it's your creative process. Mm. So, do you have one of those? Yeah, I, I'll have a. I have a process in terms of when I come with the idea, because so, so for me the biggest thing is. Um, so what I do is I come with the questions first. Mm. The okay. questions lead to the answers. So I always go okay, what questions I'm going to ask in this post match interview. So I'm like, what? Because one of the questions that I can go, let's say if I go orange juice for example and i got okay cool i'm gonna talk about orange juice in a coffee mug what am i gonna ask like uh, like about that like it's, that's a good idea and i'm like why why is it in a coffee mug and then like and then you go okay cool why is it in a coffee mug oh it's in a coffee mug because blah blah blah, blah. Then, I, then i start then i start going there's mm, no it's not working okay then i go like okay, go again and go again i go oh maybe this joke might fit into at the end yeah or maybe this joke must come in yeah that's doing the process and i'll, I'll give you the lotion one for example um Great I, one, by the way. I just thank you. I just before, just had load shedding was coming. Uh, that that that, that dread notification had load shedding in forty five minutes. Mm. So I got out, just went upstairs to my room, got it. I was like, oh, it's terrible. So then, <laughs> so I remember I got this. I got this terrible thing of going upstairs. My habit of I'll go upstairs to do something. I just like lay in my bed and like, <laughs> I'm like oh, oh, oh crap, man, I can't get my charger. And then I walk back downstairs. What was like, I here for? Like literally, the TV's paused. The, yeah. the TV's paused downstairs. I'm just like laying on my bed. So then. Got upstairs and I was like, oh, load shedding. I'm like, oh, yeah, load shedding is back. And I was like, I didn't think you'd make a video about load shedding, but also from load shedding's perspective, mm. from, the, from the idea to be posting about 20 minutes, because those are the good ones. And you go, 
momentum it just, just works hits, just yeah. works you're like oh this is this is great this and this this is back this is back okay cool and then sometimes some of them it's some other ones i've had like it's it's, it's i think about on a wednesday the idea pops on then for the thursday friday i'm just working on it slowly but some of my slow burners you, yeah oh this is grinding this is this, this is this okay cool or then sometimes i hear i pick up something from someone else is saying okay cool and then i sort of then so the process is, is it, it varies but in the, the day like but the big in terms of the idea how to come up with what i'm gonna say but it's always the questions first once i have the questions i feel like i'm in a good space then from there i can sort of go like okay got the question okay now I was almost, I'm almost official like, like way too from here. Okay, that's why I'm finishing. Mm. Cap. Now I need like I'm gonna go one question. I'm gonna go three questions. I'm gonna go one question. Or if I do one question, that means so that you I'm, do have a formula to it. Yeah, yeah. So there is a like, bit of a formula. So I do one question. The first, the first answer has got to be quick. It's got to be you know not drawn out. Second mm. one, right? Okay, because I, I try to make it about a minute and a half ish. When it's 14. Yeah, there's, there's, that, there's that good duration yeah. that keeps people's attention. So right? you're like, okay, cool, first is going to be quick. It's a, it's a three word answer. Second one is this. And it's always something you're always sort of working on certain things. And then it depends. Like now I'm sort of obviously branching out, like doing like um, like the one I did about Chelsea the other day. It's, that's my, my major man sent me that video as a reminder. I was like, oh, actually, I could use this. For, I could use yeah, this. Yeah, use this content. Yeah. And then so I use it. But that's like, I was thinking, that's me. I may, I may have one or two beverages there but i mean <laughs> that's me in my rose form um that's what that yeah that's 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 me like again i was saying that's 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 what i'm in real life that's the person you see there in that video at the start that's how i am all the time i'll they like to speak nonsense and clearly chelsea proved me right and wrong but but again like, so my process like, it, it definitely varies into onto how i'm feeling because like also sometimes i genuinely like think of something on the spot and then my whole day is like then i'm like okay Pause everything for the afternoon. Yeah, I let need me, to. Let me refine this. Get I, this I, too. I, I, I need to get this out. Like I need to get this out today. Yeah, that's what sometimes. And I and, and all this are fun. I've been on the golf course. I'm like, guys, I need to go. What you leave around? No, not leave around. But I'm, I'm not like. I'm no, like no, I can't stay after it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I need to go. That's something I need to work on, and, and I want to get it out by five o'clock. It's three o'clock now, so I need to need to, to get it out, and then sort of sort of, and then sort of, and sometimes I go like, sorry, Oaks, false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was something. It, it was wasn't. Something, it wasn't what it was. Sense. Yeah. No, I love that. I think I think there's just I think it's testament to and you said it off camera. Um, you're a professional shit talker, so it's years of refining that ability mm. and then being able to pick out what will or won't work and then go through that. Yeah, and like you have to. I guess you're almost curating your thoughts. Like I love the example with the orange juice and the mug. It's like okay, I can say oh no. Don't go down that direction. Mm. That leads to something else. Yeah. But then through that process, you even get to, like you said earlier, and again, it might not even be in this cut, but it's you. You might you might stumble upon something now which doesn't fit the joke, but it might fit something later 100%, on. Yeah. So you always have it. Sometimes, like I think it's changing all the time. Sometimes I'll be doing an interview video. I'm like, actually, this is the style. I need to do it now. Change mm. it. Change style completely. So. Yeah, which is always now. So there's not not so some jokes I may throw at the scrap heap, but actually it's like I'm gonna go digging for it mm. very soon. I'm like oh, I, I I remember I remember this joke or or sometimes I'll use a joke. Um, it's a joke I used once my, my first ever load shedding video I did um a couple of years back when load shedding was still like it was load shedding. It was like two, it wasn't like this whole stage one <laughs> stage two. And then I said um, the OG load shedding. Yeah, he sort of came back and I said. Yeah. It's a bad day for South Africans, but a good day for candle makers. And then, <laughs> sort of taking that and then we use that. Everyone knows me, like, how much I love, I love a beer. So, like, of course, it's a bad day to have a beer. And then it's uh, sort of, and I've used that several times. Yeah, manifest like, in something bigger, right? Yeah, 100%. Like, I remember, like, yeah, I still use for anything else. Like, you know, like, it's winter now, so, like, bad, bad day to have a six pack between winter. I mean, no, no. No one's gonna see it. No one's gonna see it. Yeah. Just time, time for guys like me to shine. Um, <laughs> but like again, like so, all those jokes, I always feel like they they still have a life. Some of them obviously they relate to one thing only, and it's done. But yeah, I think cause sometimes for motivation, I do have sometimes have a look, a look see at what I do. But one one thing I will tell you, I'll tell you a little secret is, I never rewatch my full videos okay. be before I post it. Okay. Because I know. Or oh, you're gonna probably want to change something again. At the moment, I know it feels good. Yeah. And I'm very harsh on myself. And yeah. the You're the biggest critic. Good. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll listen to the first 10 seconds, then like fast forward about 30 seconds in, okay, I still sound fine there. Fast forward then, okay, oh, I remember I said this. Then I'll go, and I'll, I'll, I'll go, okay, I'm speaking too quickly, now I'm fine. Oh, 
Okay. Also, I, I still wanted to be as I wanted to be natural. Well, it's authentic. Don't want to be like heavily like scripted too much. And yeah, so like so I don't so so end up just I'll just put and I'm like and I post and like so and sometimes I'll see like oh I started there but because I was whatever started I'm like yeah but actually that's who I am I'm not. I don't want to take that part out because I used to be, and I remember when I used to be so strict and be like, oh, you made a mistake to restart. I'm like, yeah, oh, but it's like mistakes happen. Like, no one sits there and it's like, sort of. No one remembers that. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And then they, they remember the joke. If I, yeah, I'll restart. If I, like, if I, if a key joke is like, right now, then I'll restart. But I think it's also about being aware of yourself to even yeah. utilize the stutter mm. to your advantage. I mean, a man mm. with a stutter on super sport, I mean, that's. Mm. That's why super sport socials. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 100%. You know, and work on things like that. And also find a way to make it authentic, mm. you know, and find a way to sort of do it in a way where, I do it in a way where it's like, because generally, like, I do tell people, like, I don't know what the next words are going to come in my mouth. I plan roughly, as I want to say, but then once I like, press the button and I'm recording, sometimes I don't know my What's going to come out, yeah. I think, but also, like, I think I'm very harsh on myself. Mm. So it's like, I'll be on a roll and I'll be like, oh, when I started this video, like I'll be like, I'll, I'll be like, like a minute in, I'll be thinking, oh yeah, I didn't say this thing in the beginning. I'm like, stop. And I'll go, oh, I did say it. Now look, now I'm back to like, back to square one. Now. Yeah. This all my phones, all those fools, all those, all those bad takes. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta be able to delete those things. You're hoarding uh, them. Uh, it depends. I think uh, I need to put together a, a blooper reel again. Oh, 100%. Uh, See, it's it's all about reusing the content too. Yeah. Finding so, creative uh, ways to, so to create content. I used to, I used to, I used to do ones a couple of times and then I think I wanted to pop one again for all time's sake and mm. me trying to actually see if I can still be trying to create some sort of content. Do it, do it, do it. I want to ask you, I think you've mastered personal branding in a way in which you didn't read the book. You just kind of went with what felt natural. Mm. So anyone that's listening to this, that's wanting to start their own personal branding, what would your advice be to them? I think, like I said, the key word is personal branding. So it's all up to you and how you want it to be and how you want to my Instagram, it's different now, for example, how I looked at it before. I mean, obviously, a lot of it is is work and things like that. But again, it's what I portray on my Instagram, for example, is who I am. Mm. I love sports. I love speaking shit. I love my job. I love having a beer. <laughs> I love playing golf. That's who I am. So I, so I portray- you sound the exact same yeah. person. <laughs> so like when I portray it on my Instagram, it's that's that, that's that's who I am. That's my personal brand, and that's um, and 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 I'm, and I'm also very strict on things that affect that personal brand. Mm. And in terms of like, I'm not gonna change the way I am, sort of for to, to for the narrative. And if someone is dragging me away from who I am for a narr- narrative, sort of, I sort of I cut that away. So it's, uh, my things, I know who I am. I'm, I'm very strict, and I've had to be because of just the life we live now. It's different now. It's sort of you in the public eye, because you have to sort of. Be wary on what you, on, on what I do. Yeah, and things like of these things. Uh, exactly, and, and and be, and and that comes. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be to be in that position. It's a privilege to be in public eye. It's not as much. I can't say. Oh, it's, no, it's a privilege to, to do what I do, and to to entertain to entertain people. And I think for me, the personal branding part, the hardest part has been realizing that I have fans. Sometimes like I won't make a video for like two, I just make a video for like three weeks, and I'm like people are like, hey, my man, where's the videos? Like. We're following you for a reason, your brother. Like, yeah. can you keep that engine churning? Or if you take a break, tell us. Like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, that is actually true. Like, I was like, oh, I actually have fans who want to, <laughs> they want videos. And I have to keep providing and I provide because that's what they follow. And which is, a, again, it's a blessing as well. Mm. And but then, you not find there's maybe even like a little bit of a curse because now you have to compromise. It, 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 I don't say compromise. Um, it's. I also carry my. I think obviously shifted in the way that certain things I do, and obviously yeah, the way you think about it. Possibly. Yeah, I think obviously like a way I am uh, the way I approach certain things. I know I can't. There's certain things, and it was, but it's like it's a good thing. There's certain things that I can't do. There's certain obviously like it's it all depends. Like you know the old cliche like who to trust and which people do you have around you mm. know, and, and all things like that. Luckily, I've got good people around me, people who who, who do have my back. And yeah, people who know this and this is things are a bit different now than how it used to be, and um, that's. That's obviously part of it, and then, but again, again, I see more with the. I always see things from a more positive side. Good, yeah. As sort of worrying on the negatives. Obviously, there's times you're like, oh man, it is, can get a bit, can get a bit daunting. But again, it's 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 part and parcel of it. But again, got a good support structure behind me that does actually pull me back to reality. I got friends of mine, mine, you've you've met them. They give they. 
they give two crits of what I do. They they bring it back down to earth, <laughs> and like so, so they'll never let you fly too hard. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be happy. Congrats, pretty then just boom straight back down to earth, and then. But again, like I said, that like personal branding is a big thing for me. With for your personal brand, again, it's who you, people around you to, mm. to make sure you stay due to your true, authentic self. I think that's a great segue to this question: is when you heard blood, sweat, and ideas. What does that mean to you? I think yeah, the same thing as like blood, sweat, ideas. Like I mean, I'm so you think blood, sweat, tears from coaching, <laughs> but the same aspect of the blood, sweat, the the work that comes with the ideas, that it is a graft, and people tend to forget that mm. as much as any creative process, anything it does, there is a certain level of work that goes into it, and. But it's worth it, especially when the ideas come. Because, and I love the fact that the blood, sweat, and that comes first, and then the ideas. Yeah. But for me, it's that, um, especially in the creative space, where people from the outside it doesn't look like people. People, people think you work. People don't think you work. They probably think if you work in, in advertising, like, oh, you guys just sit in a circle and just throw around ideas all day. I'm like, yeah, but you're working. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so for me, the blood, sweat, and ideas is is definitely a thing of like, the work, the graft, the grind, and actually sitting and what goes beyond an idea what is an idea how do we come up with this idea mm. how and once you have that idea how can we make it into the fruition of what we want it how to do we be? actually make it happen because what people understand is it's hard to find that, the initial idea first and foremost before you execute you got to find that the idea. right one and and for me it's not about it's you can replicate an idea a good idea if you know the, the why you did it and how you did it mm. same way like when i used to coach if i if you from coaching right back, or to you like, wh- like, how did you guys score that try? You're like, no, we scored a try. I'm like, how did you score it? Mm. What did you do? What was the process? What's the process? What is the why? Why did you do this? Okay, you can replicate that again. So that's like, w- w- any ideas now, it's why do we have this idea? How do we come up with this idea? Then you can know, like, here's our why, here's our how. Replicate. Now it goes, in, when you're trying to put it together, then it's like, okay, how did you make this idea into a visual thing? So that's how, when I hear blood sweat and ideas, that's what I, that's what I think. Great. My head. I love it, Cooks. It is coming to that time of the podcast where we're going to have to love and leave you. But we do have a little bit of a tradition here where the <laughs> former guests asked a question. Yeah. And their question was, where would you want yourself and those closest to you to be in the next five years? Ooh, that's tough because I have one New Year's resolution I've had probably since I was 14. It's every year I make the best year. Of, every year this will be the best year of my life same resolution so it's hard for you to, so I tend not to look too far ahead but just to be happy and fulfilled in what I do uh, myself to hopefully still be doing working at Super Sports still creating amazing content mm. and but sort of obviously in a bigger scale which, which which I'd love to do I think that's that's what I want and then from the people closest to me just to be happy and obviously to, to, for me to make them proud and just yeah just want them to be happy and, 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 and want them to sort of yeah so, but mostly be proud of me and be at least know that I'm doing a half decent job. I th- I think you're doing more than a half decent yeah. job. Yeah, so I say, yeah, five years time. I think that's oh, geez, also my probably my handicap to be. At <laughs> I knew so something 20, was coming. It's a twenty now. So if I get if I get like twelve, ten, five, five years. I I, th- I think you'll be getting there. That's a lot I, of golf. I think you'll be. Well, I think you you've got the uh, the work life balance for it. Yeah, I think so. If, if I'm still twenty in five years time, I'm gonna be very angry. You're gonna be an angry <laughs> golfer. Yeah. Um, and then what would your question be for our next guest? Ooh, hmm. I probably ask them like, what makes them. If they did look back, what makes them unique? What's what makes them authentic? You know, because someone was asked like, "Oh, what makes you you?" And we were like, "No, it's just me." Like, I th- there's always an answer there. There's something yeah. about each person that makes them. It's authentic. like your it's like your fingerprint. What makes yeah. you unique what, to yourself? And then, and because if you know that, mm. you can, it's your essence. It's your essence. If you, know, if you know that, you can nothing. No one can shake you from your core because you know what makes yeah. you truly unique to yourself. I love it. Cooks, thank you so much for spending the time. Yeah, thank you, thank with, you for having me. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think Blood, Sweat and Ideas is very grateful. So is the team around us today working here on set. I think it's been a laugh a minute with you. And <laughs> we you. only wish you the most success. But I think it comes down to your tenets of what's gotten you to where you are today, which is your consistency, your authenticity, creating relatable content, and just honing that ability and skill 
Um, and I can't wait to watch the space even further. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so it. much. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Thanks, team.